Hello everyone. Welcome to this quick video on insert update delete on S3 with Amazon Athena and Apache Iceberg. If you are building your data lake on Amazon S3, one question that you may have is can I run insert update delete transactions and asset transactions on object storage? The answer is yes. Athena Iceberg integration provides you a very simple way to run CRUD operations on S3. This is Ram Kumar Notad. I'm a senior solutions architect with AWS focusing on analytics services. Today, we'll be taking a look at this option in detail. Amazon Athena is a service that makes it easy to analyze data directly in Amazon S3 and various other storage systems using standard SQL. Athena is serverless so there is no infrastructure to set up or manage and you pay only for the queries you run and save up to 30 to 90 percentage by compressing, partitioning and converting your data into columnar formats. Athena uses ANSI SQL for querying with support for Parquet, CSV, JSON, Avro and other standard data formats. Athena scales automatically running queries in parallel so results are fast even with large data sets and complex queries. Apache Iceberg is an open table format for very large analytic data sets. Iceberg manages large collection of files and tables and it supports modern analytical data lake operations such as record level insert, update, delete and time travel queries. Amazon Athena announced as a transactions a new capability that adds write, delete, update, and time travel operations to Athena's SQL data manipulation language using Apache Iceberg. At the time of this recording, that is December 2021, this feature is in preview. Athena as a transactions enables multiple concurrent users to make reliable rollable modifications to their Amazon S3 data from Athena's console API and ODBC and JDBC drivers. Athena Asset Transactions are compatible with other services and engines such as Amazon EMR, Apache Spark or other tools that supports Apache Iceberg table format. Let's see this in action. I'm into AWS Management Console. Here you can see that there are two different CSV files which is where my data is residing and that's in this S3 bucket. And for the demonstration purpose, I'm using a sporting event ticket data. And for me to read that, what I've done is I went ahead and cataloged that in Glue Data Catalog. So here you can see that it is pointing to the same location and it has a structure to it. It has nine different columns, ID, sporting event ID, and so on and so forth, and then a ticket price. And it has around 14 million records in it. Let's go to Athena. So here, the first thing that we'll be doing is creating an iceberg table. Now it's it's a typical DDL statement for creating a table. The only difference that you would see here is the table type as iceberg. So that's that's a change uh, that we have included here. So I'll go ahead and create this table. The next thing that we are going to do is loading the data from the CSV files that we had, which is nothing but the data catalog entry of sporting event ticket. So that's the table name that we have given in the data catalog. That's where our CSV files are residing. We are moving that data into the new iceberg table that we have created. Okay, the query is complete. Let's go ahead and verify the counts. This is the, I will go ahead and run the select count star from both source and the target. So if you look at uh, the count from the source, so this is the sporting event ticket. So the source count is 14.9 uh, million records. That's what is the, the count from the source. And let's take a look at the, the, the target, which is the iceberg table that we just created. Okay, That has exact same number, which is 14.9 million records. The advantage of using Athena and Iceberg integration is that even though the data is still in S3, 
you can treat as if you are working on a database where you can run asset transactions, you can run updates, deletes, and even you can go and run time travel queries. Now let's take a look at that. So for that, I will specifically pick a record. So here I'm going to pick a record which has ID equal to this number, right? Here you can see that for this record, the ticket price is 36.2. Now let's go ahead and update this into ticket price as 100. Now, even at this point, the data is still residing in S3 and you are able to run an update query directly on S3. Okay. Looks like the update went through. Let's quickly validate that. Let's go ahead and run select star for the same query. Okay. So now you can see that the, for the same record, the ticket price is updated to 100. Now, the interesting part here is be able to run a time travel query to check what was the, the value for this particular record maybe five minutes back. Let's go ahead and check that out. So here you can see that five minutes back, the value for ticket price is 36.2. Here in this select query, we saw that it is 100 and this select query where we are giving an interval of current timestamp minus five minutes, you can see that it was 36.2. So you have an ability to go back in time and figure out what was the value for a specific record at a, any given point in time. You can be very specific about the, the timestamp or time frame as well. For example, you can use something like this where you can say that I want to select the data as of this timestamp were ID equal to this. So let's let's see what we have there. Okay, there again you can see that going back five minutes as well as a specific timestamp where I travel back to uh, a timestamp which I was uh, which I was sure that the update did not happen at that point in time. I was able to see that the ticket price is still 36.2. What we are going to do next is delete a set of records from this table. But before we delete, let's go ahead and do a count star to see how many records are there with seat level four. Let's go ahead and run this query. All right here, you can see that it has 1.4 million records with seat level as four. Now we are going to run a delete for all of those 1.4 million records. Let's run that delete. Okay, the query is successful. So here again, you can see that you, you still have your data on S3 and you are able to run a delete transaction on the data which is sitting on S3. Let's go and verify whether the delete has actually went ahead and deleted all the records that we wanted to delete. Okay, the query is complete. Here you can see that now when we did a select uh, count star with seat level four, we have zero records. So that means the delete query was successful and it was able to delete all the records with seat level four. Now here again, we have the option of going back in time and selecting the records, right? For example, if I want to go ahead and run a query, time travel query, where I want to do a count star from ticket data with current timestamp minus interval as last two minutes. Ideally, I should be getting that 1.4 million records back. There you go. We have that 1.4 million records. If I time travel back to two minutes, I had these many records with seat level four. So that's how powerful it is when we use Athena and Iceberg together. Here is what we discussed in this video. We created an Iceberg table in Athena, inserted data into it, then we updated and deleted a few records using simple DMLs, and all of this data is sitting on S3. 
Then we also tried time travel queries back to a few minutes as well as based on a specific timestamp. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.